Well, what do we have here? Looks like a knife ship free Main Street pocket slip with a bulge in it. <laughs> you know what that means, guys. Time for a little show and tell of a traditional knife. Stay with me, I'll show you what's inside. Hi gang, Rob here. It's the evening of 10 March 2014. I've got a little something for you tonight. It's a, yeah, it is a traditional knife. I've had this one, oh, I guess it's been knocking around in my pocket for two or three weeks. And it is another in the Northfield Cutlery Unexcelled line from Great Eastern Cutlery, or GEC as we've come to know them. This one is, I guess, not a very popular pattern, and I don't know why. Well, actually, I think I, think I do know the reason why, but just look at it. Kind of a sleeve board pattern, meaning narrower at one end than the other, with straight lines. This is the number 78 uh, Great Eastern Cutlery American Jack. And they only build this pattern one way as far as uh, uh, blade configuration, I believe. <clears throat> and let's look at them, shall we? The main blade is a gorgeous clip point. I think about two and three quarters inches long. The overall length of the handle on this knife is three and three quarters, I think. This might be two and seven eighths inch this blade. Uh, it has met the sharpener here on the Apostle P sharpening bench. So it's got a gleaming near mirror polished edge. And the unexcelled Northfield logo, the laser etched, is oh I guess almost obliterated by polishing. Uh, that doesn't hold up to flits too well, guys, just so you know. Take a look at this gorgeous swedge. Look at that clip point, how it comes to such a needle sharp point. The clip point blades on the GEC knives do thicken a bit at the tip. That's why you see the bevel broaden out just a little bit. Then you've got this gorgeous long pull. Mm. And then the other blade is just about the most perfect pen blade I've ever seen. That blade uh, is almost two inches in length. In fact, it might be a little over two inches. Just a perfect profile for a pen blade. Both these blades are 1095 plain carbon steel, as you'll always see in the Northfield Unexcelled line from Great Eastern Cutlery. Now let's get to the reason why maybe this knife isn't the most popular in the world. Uh, that walk and talk comes with a price. The main blade back spring on the American Jack is heavy duty. <clears throat> and I think that's why a lot of guys don't like it. I mean, it, it is a thumbnail ripper. <laughs> Let's give that blade a little wipe. But you know... I guess it's part of the character of this knife that I like. Um, <clears throat> it's the American Jack, isn't it? Uh, this main blade is stout. It's brawny. And it's on a heavy spring. You know, it's sort of the, <laughs> it's sort of the, uh, the big-shouldered cowboy of traditional knives, I think. But, still, as an EDC knife, you've got this super functional pen blade. I mean, great little letter opener. On a much lighter spring. Don't know if you can hear the difference. But there is a significant difference. And this is a classic jack knife pattern. Meaning, two blades pivot on the same end on different back springs with a liner separating them. The liners on this knife, of course, are brass. Bolsters are nickel silver. 
and the covers are cranberry jigged bone in a pretty cool jig pattern I think almost sort of has that uh, saw cut look it's uh, different and a pattern of, of jigging that I don't have in the collection or didn't have until I bought this knife just a fine little piece love that unexcelled shield also nickel silver and pinned will not fall out of course the uh, the rivets are brass here's a little known fact among some of you who might be new to the traditional knife hobby you know we hear that term nickel silver bolsters well when they're silver colored instead of brass <clears throat> that's usually what we find in a, in, a, in a higher quality traditional knife. Some of the less expensive ones are going to be stainless steel. But when you hear that term nickel silver, uh, don't be misled. Nickel silver is not a variety of silver. Uh, nickel silver is sort of the current nomenclature for something that used to be known as German silver. And what it is essentially is a white brass. It is a, a brass-like copper alloy, just like brass is a copper alloy, um, with a super high nickel content, which gives it the white color, sort of a, the cast of silver. If you notice, you know, the difference between the highly polished carbon steel blade and the nickel silver bolster, it's a little yellower, you know, kind of like silver is. <clears throat> And it was used in counterfeit coins back in the day. And when the jig was up on that program, uh, when the authorities figured out how to easily test for it, uh, this German silver or nickel silver found its way uh, into, among other things, the knife making industry as a, uh, an alternative to brass, which does, you know, haze and corrode, you know, it sort of gets that that dull yellow cast to it. Nickel silver doesn't do that. Um, although it will scratch and haze over as you know as you get pocket wear on it, it polishes up easily and it doesn't tarnish at all. <clears throat> Which makes it a very nice material for bolsters on a knife. I am really loving Great Eastern Cutlery. I think this is what the, well, the third GEC Northfield knife that I own, and actually this is the second one. You haven't seen the third one yet. And then the, the two Northwoods knives that I own, the uh, Madison Barlow and the Fremont Jack, are Northwoods brand, owned by Derek Bone of Knives Ship, knives ship Free, but those are manufactured to his design specs by Great Eastern Cutlery. They definitely build a traditional knife that is a cut above a case. And I think sometime in the next few weeks I'm going to do a video kind of comparing uh, WR Case and Sons product against uh, Great Eastern Cutlery. There are some things Case does better, um, but there are lots of things that GEC does better than Case. What a handsome little piece of pocket jewelry, huh? Actually, what a great little working knife. Again, you've got the, the curved bottom of the tang. Your index finger sort of slips behind the exposed squared off tang of the pen blade for a perfect forward saber grip. Knife is just super comfortable in all grips and with a stout enough back spring if you guys saw my Instagram post today stabbed it right into a tree stump uh, and it's a slip joint there's no lock you know you kinda want to be careful doing that you kids don't try that at home but you know there was a time when if you had a folding knife uh, this was about as stout as it got there's no such thing as a lock back or a frame lock or a liner lock uh, they were all slip joints and for heavy duty work, you needed a heavy duty back spring. You 
can be a pansy and worry about your thumbnail. <laughs> I kind of like this uh, bully of a folding knife. Just thought you all would like to see it. We'll uh, slip it back in its leather home and put it back in the pocket. You all have a great evening. Grace to you and peace, my friends, from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember, the word is sharp.